also apply to stand for the Honorable Arwin Kaimbon. <laughs> This court is now in session. Please be seated. People of the Philippines versus Dr. Rodrigo Santos for reckless imprudence resulting in serious physical injuries dated December 17, 2023. Is the prosecution ready? Yes, Judge. We are ready. Call me your honor. Otherwise, I will cite you in contempt of court. Is the defense ready? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Anneli Jimeno uh, from the defense for capital persons. Attorney Abe, you may have called your expert witness. Can we call our Arbe? doctor uh, for medical expert witness, Dr. Maria Transmarita Jones, to the United States? Dr. Carion, you will try to win. Please put your left hand on this Bible and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the, the truth in this court of law? Yes. Okay. You may proceed. Your Honor, uh, we are here today to prove that Dr. Rodrigo Santos acted with reckless imprudence during the knee surgery, which resulted in Mrs. Rodriguez developing sepsis post operative set up and technique for total knee arthroplasty. The total knee replacement technique is of course focused around the initial prepping and draping of the arthroplasty. It's important that prior to the surgical procedure that appropriate pans are assembled on the back table that all prosthetic devices are available and that the patient has been preoperatively templated to determine size and a type of implant necessary. In some cases, the implants will be high flex. In some cases, the implants will be standard. With the uh, prepping and draping technique, the choice of Prepping and draping materials is obviously the surgeon's prerogative. Once the drapes are applied and the incision is identified, a linear incision is made. It's important to identify campers, fascia. Once this is elevated, you'll be able to identify the medial border of the patella. An incision is made through this retinacular tissue, which is allowing exposure of the joint, and it's important to allow a small cuff of tissue along the edge of the VMO so that it can be reattached. Try to make your incision through the capsular tissue in a fashion that is flowing and not with sharp angles. Visualization of the joint allows for dissection along the medial aspect of the knee. With the medial dissection, one can begin the soft tissue release for a varus knee. Following this, a portion of the fat pad is excised to allow for mobilization of the patella. Approximately 15 cc's of the pain cocktail fluid is injected into the soft tissues. I like to inject a pr major proportion of this in the medial soft tissue structures. Once the uh, cement is hardened, it is important to check a range of motion of the component. Closure of the caps or tissues is best done in flexion. Therefore, a bump is placed in almost all cases. A reinfusion drain is placed. I'd like to close the retinacular tissues with several non-absorbables in the apex of the incision and then the remaining portion is non-absorbable closure. My preference is to do a subcuticular closure for the skin. 
The patients uh, clearly like the fact that they do not have to have sutures removed. And we will present the medical expert who will testify the doctor failed to adhere to the medical practice during the procedure. Uh, Dr. Camille, what makes you the best medical expert to testify on this case? Yes. I am a board certified orthopedic specialist, associate professor of a spinal musculoskeletal surgery specializing in minimally invasive surgery, the cervical spine, motion preserving musculoskeletal procedures in robotic computer, navigation surgery. My practices at HSS involves a customized approach to each individual patient to help maximize quality of life and musculoskeletal health. I incorporate newer and minimally invasive surgery techniques to improve patient performance as well as infectious disease expert who specialize in diagnosing and treating conditions caused by bacteria, parasites, viruses, and fungi. Graduated from the University of Las Vegas with a triple major in biochemistry and molecular biology, chemistry and economics with honors. Then attended Stanford where I was involved in stem cell research and early studies using robotic assisted surgery. Surgical residency in Harvard and subspecialty surgical fellowship at the Hospital for Special Surgery and received an honor for serving as an academic chief president at the Massachusetts General Hospital I was later recognized as an emerging leader by the world's oldest and most distinguished orthopedic association, the American Orthopedic Association for, um, for my contributions to education and research. I am a fellow of the American and Filipino Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons and Diplomat of the American and Filipino Board of Orthopedic Surgery. I have operated on and cared for spine patients on four different continents and have been invited lecturer at many regional, national, and international academic meetings around the world. My private patients at HSS have included elite professional athletes, international patients, musicians, doctors, and other high-performance individuals. I was the medical expert for Lucas versus Tuanyo, Agbayani versus Holifenia, and more resulting in the convictions of the defendant. So, Dr. Carillon, can you explain to this knowledge report what is the typical uh, standard medical practice are during a knee surgery? Certainly. During a knee surgery, it is crucial for the surgeon to maintain a sterile environment, follow proper surgical techniques, and monitor the patient's condition closely. Failing to do so can result in complications such as infectious like sepsis. So, how can deviation from standard medical practices during knee surgery increase the risk of complications like sepsis? During a knee surgery following standard medical practice, it is essential to ensure proper sterilization, minimize the risk of infection, and maintain a safe surgical environment. Deviating from these practices can increase the risk of complications like sepsis in several ways. Firstly, proper sterilization techniques prevent the introduction of any bacteria or pathogens into the surgical site. If a surgeon deviates from these practices, can potentially introduce harmful bacteria that may cause infections just like sepsis. Secondly, following standard practices ensure that appropriate measures are taken to control bleeding during the surgery. If a surgeon fails to adhere these practices, excess bleeding may occur, leading to a higher chance of infection and potential complications like sepsis. Additionally, standard practices also include guidelines for post-operative care, for closely monitoring vital signs, deviations from these practices may result in inadequate post-operative care, increasing the risk of infection and subsequent complications. In summary, deviations from standard medical practices during a knee surgery can increase the risk of complications like sepsis by introducing pathogens causing excessive bleeding. So, Dr. Carrier, in your professional opinion, could these deviations from standard practice have contributed to this previous Objection, Your Honor. Your Honor, have you approached the bench? Yes, you may. Your Honor, there's no... Pardon? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. I advise you to yes, the patient question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I will replace my question. 
Dr. Carrion, in your professional opinion, could these deviations from standard practices cause developing sepsis? Absolutely. The lack of sterilization, improper antibiotic administration, and inadequate monitoring significantly increase the post-operative infection, such as sepsis. These deviations from standard practices are concerning and can be considered reckless. Did you review the details of this from this case? Yes, I did. Based on the medical records provided, it appears that Dr. Santos deviated from the standard medical practices. During the knee surgery, he did not adequately sterilize the operating room, failed to administer appropriate antibiotics, and did not monitor Mrs. Rodriguez's post-operative condition adequately. So what are the potential consequences of not following proper sterilization techniques during the surgery? What are the potential consequences of not following the proper sterilization techniques during the surgeries? Well, there are a few. One, surgical site infections. Failure to maintain a sterile environment can lead to surgical site infections, which can cause pain, swelling, redness, and drainage at the surgical site. In severe cases, these infections can spread to other areas of the body and require additional treatment. Delayed healing. Improper sterilization techniques can introduce bacteria or other pathogens into the surgical site, impairing the body's natural healing process. This can result in delayed healing, prolonged recovery time, and potential complications. And then there is implant-related complications. Knee surgeries often involve the use of implants and prostheses. If these implants are not properly sterilized, they can become a potential source of infection. This can lead to implant-related complications such as loosening instability or even the need of revision surgery. Uh, number four, increased Cuts. risk of systematic infections. In some cases, bacteria introduced during knee surgery can enter the bloodstream and cause systemic infections. These infections can be severe and may require hospital uh, hospitalization and aggressive treatment with antibiotics. And then number five, longer hospital stay and increased healthcare costs. Surgical site infections or other complications due to inadequate sterilization can require additional medical care, potentially leading to a longer hospital stay and increased healthcare costs for the patient. It is crucial for surgeons and healthcare providers to strictly adhere to proper sterilization techniques to minimize the potential consequences and ensure the best possible outcomes for patients undergoing knee surgeries. That's all for now, Your Honor. Uh, any clarification question that raised after the cross examination? Attorney Mena, you may not cross examine the medical expert. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen, we acknowledge the unfortunate complication faced by Mrs. Rodriguez. However, we firmly contest any claims of recklessness or negligence on the part of Dr. Santos. Expert witnesses will testify to Please skill and adherence to medical standard during the surgery. Dr. Carion, while you claim that Dr. Santos deviated from the standard medical practices, isn't it true that complication can occur when proper procedures are followed? Yes, that is true. No surgery is entirely risk-free, and complications can arise despite the best efforts of the surgical team. However, in this case, Dr. Santos' deviations from standard practices were significant factors that contributed to Mrs. Rodriguez's developing sepsis. Okay, so what are some specific steps that surgeons can take to ensure proper sterilization techniques during knee surgery? To ensure proper sterilization techniques, there's one, hand hygiene. Surgeons and their team should thoroughly wash their hands with soap and water and use alcohol-based hand sanitizer before and after each procedure. This helps to minimize the transfer of bacteria and other pathogens. Sterile attire. Surgeons should wear sterile gowns, gloves, masks, and caps during the surgery to maintain a sterile environment and minimize the risk of contamination. Proper disinfection of the surgical site. The surgical site should be properly prepared and disinfected before the incision is made. This may involve using antiseptic solutions to clean the skin or applying sterile drapes to isolate the area. Sterile instruments and equipment. All surgical instruments and equipment used during the procedure should undergo thorough cleaning 
sterilization and packaging according to established protocols. Disposable instruments should be discarded uh, after each use. Sterile draping. The surgical area should be draped with sterile drapes to create a sterile field. This prevents contamination from non-sterile surfaces and helps maintain a clean operating environment. Monitoring and maintenance of the sterility. Ongoing monitoring maintenance of sterility should be carried out throughout the procedure. This includes regularly checking sterile indicators, ensuring aseptic technique is followed, and promptly addressing the breaches in sterility. Proper waste disposal. All potentially contaminated materials include used drapes, gauze, and other disposables should be disposed of in designated biohazard containers to prevent cross-contamination. By following these specific steps, surgeons can help minimize the risk of surgical site infections and other complications associated with inadequate sterilization techniques during knee surgery. So what measures can be taken to maintain a uh, sterile environment during knee surgeries to prevent contamination? Well, to maintain a sterile environment, Strict hand hygiene, like I mentioned earlier, all healthcare professionals involved in the surgery should thoroughly wash their hands with soap and water or use alcohol-based hand sanitizer before and after every procedure. Pre-operative patient preparation. The surgical site should be properly prepared and disinfected before incision using antiseptic solutions to clean the skin. Sterile drapes should be also applied to isolate the area. Sterile instruments and equipment. All surgical instruments and equipment used during the procedure should undergo thorough cleaning, sterilization, and packaging according to established protocols. Disposable instruments should be discarded after each use. Sterile draping. The surgical area should be draped with sterile drapes to create a sterile field. This prevents contamination from non-sterile surfaces and helps to maintain a clean operating environment. Monitoring and maintenance of sterility. Ongoing monitoring and maintenance of sterility should be carried out throughout the procedure. This includes regularly checking sterile indicators, ensuring aseptic technique is followed, and promptly addressing any breaches in sterility. But isn't it possible that the sepsis could have been caused by other factors unrelated to Dr. Santos' actions during the knee surgery? Although it is theoretically possible, based on my analysis of the medical records, Dr. Santos' deviations from standard practices were most significant contributing factors to Mrs. Rodriguez's developing sepsis. It is important to emphasize the importance of following standard practices to minimize these risks. No further questions. That's it. Are there any public questions for the council for the prosecution? For the prosecution, yes, Your Honor. Uh, the witness is no excuse. We'll have a recess. We will resume at about uh, 1 p.m. of this afternoon for the promulgation of judgment. The hearing is adjourned. This court is now in session. Please be seated. Promulgation of judgment for criminal case number 007-2023, People of the Philippines versus Dr. Rodrigo Santos for reckless imprudence resulting in serious physical injuries. The court finds the defendant, Dr. Rodrigo Santos, not guilty of... No!
sterile drapes should be also applied to